Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always a huge thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel The Bushcraft Padawan. Way back at the beginning of time, or, or at least the beginning of 2017, I set myself at a challenge to spend a night out in the woods every month for a year and I achieved that. They were my bushcraft overnighters of 2017. At the beginning of 2018, I set myself a similar challenge, spend an entire day out in the woods every month for an entire year, and I did that. They were my bushcraft all dayers of 2018. It's now the beginning of 2019, and I need to come up with another plan. There are some pros and cons of doing the overnighters, undoubtedly. There are also some pros and cons of doing the all dayers. So I thought to myself, you know what, for 2019, why don't I not worry about whether it's an overnighter or an all dayer? Why don't I just get out for a good chunk of time? Could be a day, could be an overnighter, could be an, over day, an all dayer and an overnighter glued together. Why don't I just focus on getting out at least once a month for a decent chunk of time every month for the whole of 2019? So, it's January. I've got my bushcraft gear with me. I'm bushcrafting in January. If you've watched any of those all-nighters or all-dayers series, you'll know that rather than just come out into the woods and, and bimble around, I like to come out with some sort of plan in mind, some sort of to-do list, things that I want to try, practice, refine, whatever. And this month, the beginning of January 2019, is no different. Things that I want to do today then, I want to reuse my Ohuhu stove. I'll talk about that later on. I've used it previously. I used it back in the summer of this year when there was a very dry heat wave taking place in the UK. It worked brilliantly. I want to bring it out in these conditions where it's been very cold recently, very damp. There's a lot of drizzle and, and, and light rain in the air now. I want to see how it performs today. And I particularly want to try burning pine cones. I want to see what they burn like um, in damp conditions and in this burner. The reason I want to get a fire going is because I want to try cooking an, an omelette for the first time in the woods today. Picking up the theme of pines, I also want to get myself some pine needle tea going because I'm feeling, I'm feeling the sniffles coming on so I want to have a, an, an overdose on vitamin C. So those are the things I want to try out. Revisit the, st the stove, pine cones as fuel, cook an omelette and also pine needle tea. Let's see how we get on. Before I get into any of that though, what I do want to do is put up a tarp above my head to give me a little bit of shelter during the day to keep me out of this very fine drizzly rain. I'm going to set up as quickly as I can. I'm going to set myself a timed challenge. If you've not seen my recent video about how I stow and set up and configure my tarp to allow me to get it set up very quickly then I'm linking to it up in this corner of the screen up here. Do take a look at that and that will give you an insight into how I'm able to set up the tarp I'm about to set up behind me so quickly. I'm going to speed the video up because it isn't interesting watching somebody set a tarp up in the background unless they're talking you through it. So I'm going to um, speed the camera footage up but I won't be speeding up the time on my watch. Let's see how I get on. Um. We're off. So that was three forty. There we go. That was three forty-seven. Happy with that. Especially as the bloody dog, if you look, ran off with one of my tent pegs. <laughs> three quarters of the way through making it, so I improvised on the fly. I can't. I can't blame her too much though. She probably didn't add that much time on. So three. 46. So the tarp is up. Again, if you want to see how I configure my tarp to make it easy to set up that quickly, then do feel free to take a look at the video that I linked to earlier on. I frequent this area 
fairly often. Come here in the spring, summer, the early autumn, and you can't move <laughs> for pine cones. They're everywhere. You sit down, you sit on one. You put your hand down, you get prickled by one. You're walking along, you kick one. Fast forward to today, and of course, because I'm specifically looking for them, there's an absolute pine cone drought. I strongly suspect that there isn't. I strongly suspect that the fact that autumn has, has dumped all of its leaves on the ground makes them much harder to find. But yeah, it's just interesting. They're still here. They're just a lot harder to see than they are during the summer months. Let's crack on. Aha, found one. I have a bulging pocket full of pine cones. However, I'd been hoping that the, the year-round canopy that the pine trees would provide in, in that area would have been enough to, to protect and keep those pine cones dry. And whilst there are a few dry ones there, <laughs> there's, the majority of them are not dry. And I just don't know how well pine cones burn when wet. Are they like um, silver birch, Betula pendula, where it will burn even when wet? or is that not going to be the case? So I'm going to edge my bets. I do have a decent pocket full of them. That will be my go-to. However, I am in an area where there are a lot of silver birch. So I'm going to gather some uh, a fairly small handful of um, dead standing birch twigs. Um, no more than I need to use for the, the Ohuhu stove, just in case those, uh, those pine cones don't burn or they need a little bit of help in getting started going cheese and ham omelette on the menu today. All of it is contained in that sealable plastic bag. What have I got in here then? Well, I've pre-sliced and pre-grated some cheese in there already. In the silver foil, I've got a small knob of butter. And in this plastic sealable reusable Tupperware box, you may be able to see sloshing about. I've already cracked a couple of eggs, beaten them, and added a little bit of pepper. So everything for that one skillet meal. Dog just taking a little interest there, unsurprisingly. Everything for that omelette is in there. The eggs, the pepper, the butter, the cheese, the ham, and of course the skillet to cook it all in. What I'm gonna do now to try and give these damp and that's been kind. Pine cones, a little head start is I'm forcing down in between them, both around the edges and in the middle, some pencil lead, or should I say pencil thickness, pieces of silver birch in the hope that if they can get started, they will provide enough heat to dry out and get the pine cone started. So it's always an interesting concept using this Ohuhu stove. And if you look back in my previous video that I'm linking to on the screen right now, you'll be able to see me talking about it. You kind of, you load it from the, the, the bottom up. So you put your fuel at the bottom, your kindling on top of that, and then your tinder on the top of that. Complete opposite, I guess, to a traditional fire where you have your, um, your, tin, or your kindling or your tinder, then your kindling, then your fuel. This is the absolute inverse. So quite a few pencil thickness. And now on top of that, I'm gonna place some uh, pencil lead thickness, much thinner pieces. Then on top of that, I'm gonna set the tinder and try to get it going. Those pine cones did not play out as I had hoped. They just, I wasted a lot of birch bark and a lot of pencil and pencil lead thickness trying to get it, um, trying to get it going. It, it didn't work. They were very, very wet. I guess they were too wet. I guess the answer is they don't burn well at all when wet Craig. So lesson learned there. What I'm doing now, is something that I did back in the summer, the very first time I used this stove. I defaulted to the birch 
that I collected, which I know burns when wet. I've tilted the stove on its side to make it easier to stack these. And I'm just hand feeding in pencil to thumb thickness sizes of silver birch. Dead standing that I've already collected. Now I did this back in the summer and it worked. The birch was bone dry though. I do know that silver birch burns well, or it at least burns when wet if not burns well. So it'll be interesting to see, does it still perform in a wood burning stove like this when it's got an element of dampness to it or not? I guess time will tell. I can't help but think that perhaps I've put too much filling in. There's more filling than omelette. But that's no bad thing, right? Let's try and get this flipped. Oh dear, come on. You didn't see that, did you? You didn't see that split. Come on, that's browning off well. have a think about how the day's gone then. I'll be honest, everything bad, no you can't have any, everything bad putting the tarp up was harder than I thought, Every, everything, everything was harder than I thought. The, um, I can reliably tell you that wet pine cones don't burn, no matter how much birch bark and birch twigs and birch kindling you add to it, it just doesn't burn, or it didn't for me today. So I sacked the entire idea, which was a shame, but a valuable learning, a valuable lesson along the way. So I sacked the idea and I went just for birch twigs. They were soaking wet. I'm still looking at them burning now, heating up my water for a hot chocolate. So once again, birch swings in to save the day, both in terms of starting the fire and also maintaining and providing fuel for the fire as well. Yay, go birch. I will come back to the pine cones. I will definitely come back in the summer to this area where there are lots. I may even take home the pine cones that I collected here, let them dry out and do a little test at home. Maybe I'll share that with you. But yeah, today was not a day to be burning wet pine cones. If indeed there is any day to burn wet pine cones. Once the fire got going, once again, mm, can you notice this at the corner of your, notice this down the corner of the screen? Willow, go on then. Don't tell your mum. Some ham there. Oh, lovely. Um, once the fire got going, once that stove got going, once again did a fantastic job. I have to say once again to Anthony, if you're watching this, the guy that gave me this um, out in the States, thank you once again, Anthony. It's only the second or third time I've used it. Very different conditions using it today. Very wet, very damp. Everything, everything I'm putting in there is wet is damp from the birch bark to the birch twigs to the birch branches everything was wet and it's doing a cracking job and it's still burning away there in just one load so thank you for that anthony um and yeah another 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 menu a recipe added to the uh, the woodland menu one man uh, omelet and very nice it is too I also want to say a big thank you, and I haven't done this in a video yet, to um, he who shall not be named, shall we say, but thank you for this issued Gore-Tex jacket 
thank you for the boots that I'm wearing today and are now my go-to boots for being out in the wood as well as thank you for a lot of other gear so you know who you are I won't mention your name but um, yeah you've seen me right with a lot of gear um, at a time that I know it is busy for you in your life anyway so a huge huge thank you for doing that first time I've worn this in anger today out in the woods doing this sort of thing um, it's on top of my the normal jacket that I wear on top of my leaf of thermal top and it's doing a grand job of keeping the the rain the drizzle off me so thank you once again for doing that this really is a very nice song. I know nobody, nobody ever cooks something up in the woods, eats it and goes, ah, that's horrible, I'm not having that again. It really is nice. My wife never watches these videos, so I can say with a degree of confidence, and I hope this doesn't come back to bite me, they're ni it's nicer than the one my wife makes me at home. And they're nice, they're nice. But this is a nicer omelette. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, didn't even touch the sides. I never got round to making the pine needle tea. There's a good reason for it. In order to make pine needle tea, you need to be able to get pine needles. In order to be able to get pine needles, you need to be able to reach them. The trees today, everything that was low down was, was just dead needles that had fallen and, and dropped. There are no young, or low limbed, low limbed trees in the immediate area where I was. So whilst a lot of cones had dropped, there were no real needles that were easily or safely that I could get a hold of. So no pine needle tea for today. However, I will default to the, the standard hot chocolate that I carry around with me pretty much everywhere. So it'll be a hot chocolate for today. I want to say once again a big thank you to everybody that's subscribed. If you're not, down in the bottom right hand corner of your screen for pretty much this entire video has been a subscribe button. Please do click on it. I must admit, this probably isn't the, the flagship video for this channel because almost everything I set out to do today didn't work, went wrong uh, and I had to do something else. But I think there's a lot of value in that. I think if, if every single, and let's be honest, a lot of them, if every single YouTube video on this subject showed everything working well, first time, every time, it would give an impression that what we come out and do in the woods is easy uh, and that it's, you know, there's no challenge to it and potentially, therefore, it's not worth doing. I think anybody who's spent any time out in the woods doing these sorts of thing knows that's not the case. So, wherever possible, I do try and show, yes, the successes that I have, but also the times that things don't work, the things, the time that things go wrong, and why having more than one tool in your toolkit, having a backup plan, if all I'd known to do, if all I'd been able to do, if all I knew was the ability to burn pine cones, I'd have been going hungry and thirsty today. As it was, I knew that even in wet conditions, silver birch, as well so I was able to default to that so hopefully you still took something away from this video even if it wasn't what I said I was setting out to do at the start of the video I've just got a, I've got a, a Labrador's head just sneaking into shot here and the reason it's sneaking into shot is because she wants some more omelette thank you for watching thank you for subscribing if you want to click and share and like and subscribe to this book this channel all the various buttons are below please do and I will see you next time in the woods where fingers crossed and um, plan A goes a little bit more to plan. Thanks for watching. Cheers.